the new Phantom Liberty DLC for Cyberpunk just released and today I will show you all the new features and changes in the Dogtown area of Night City and don't worry this video is completely spoiler free. To start off I want to mention the new small activities you can complete in Dogtown. First of all we have stealing cars for El Capitan. Whenever you see this wheel icon on your minimap, this means that a vehicle is located there that you can bring back in Night City. In order to obtain the vehicle, you not only have to neutralize its owner, but also get rid of an enemy pursuit using the new vehicle combat system. For each contract you complete, new cars will be available for purchase on the main market. And as you already noticed, buying vehicles is now much easier, because instead of a separate mission for every car, you can buy all of them in one single spot. The vehicles that El Capitan unlocks for you not only look rather stylish, but also have many guns and missiles mounted onto them. But that's not all, as in addition to increasing your reputation, you also get a lot of different rewards for delivering vehicles. This loot includes legendary weapons, money, skill shards and other useful items. Another side job that gives you lots of loot is the site of increased criminal activity. These locations act like dungeons, at the end of which you have to defeat a boss in order to unlock their loot cache. These locations are not only interesting because they contain unique boss encounters, but also because upon clearing the area, you get an iconic legendary weapon. For example, for clearing out this location, I got this special throwable axe that is super satisfying to use. While we're on the topic of quests, I should also mention that there is much more variety in terms of how to complete them. Of course, now you have many more skill checks in dialogues and in the open world that allow you to either get more info about Dogtown or approach the enemy front lights from another angle. As you already noticed, all skill checks either require 15 or 20 points in a specific section. That is because the Phantom Liberty DLC is rather in-game and is balanced on the fact that you have the best guns. We'll talk about this later. One thing I really like is that now, depending on what dialogue options you choose, you get a completely different type of ending for a particular mission. And I'm not talking about gigs where you choose to either complete the contract or do something else. Because depending on what choices you make in a specific quest, you can miss not only unique locations and characters, but also entire boss fights. This actually reminds me of the very first mission in the main campaign, as it also had a lot of different outcomes and possibilities. The next and probably most exciting addition is the new skill tree related to the relic. It is immediately unlocked right as you start the DLC, and the way you level up the skill tree is rather unique as in order to do that you have to find special Militech boxes scattered all around Dogtown in order to receive skill points. At first this sounds like a pretty bad idea because it's just another collectible, but here this special military data is located in places that are related to the story, so even if you don't explore and do every single side quest, you will get the majority of these special Militech crates. As for the skills themselves, there is a total of three different branches. The first one upgrades your combat cyberware, making it even deadlier than ever. The second one improves any shooting playstyle and the third branch boosts optical camo. Yeah, for some reason there's an entire skill tree dedicated to only this specific implant that I never use. Write down in the comments if you use it or not, because I really want to believe that I'm not the only one like that. The upper skill tree significantly boosts your cyborg capabilities. It has a different effect for every type of combat implant. 
for example for the Mantis Blades it improves your jump ability and for the Rocket Launcher it allows you to fire more times. The same thing applies to Gorilla Arms and the Mono Wire as they also have unique special effects. The skills on the right hand side unlock enemy vulnerabilities. Hitting this particular spot of the enemy's body will eventually cause it to explode and deal big damage to surrounding targets, similarly to a shock grenade. Although it is not really explained what are the odds of a new vulnerability appearing on an enemy, I think it's safe to say that one enemy can only have a total of one weak spot. And the skill tree on the left boosts your optimal camo capabilities. I don't really care about this upgrade to be honest, so I'll just skip it. Another feature that makes your build more powerful is the new Cyborg. And here we also received a bunch of iconic and legendary items. Now I won't go into too much detail on them because the main feature is that they cost a lot of cyborg capacity but give very great boosts. Although one thing I found very helpful is that previously rather useless implants have a good boost in their iconic version. For example, the ocular cyborg usually serves no purpose in combat but the unique eye implant increases your crit damage by a very moderate amount. Another new item I found really amusing is the Chrome Compressor, that increases your cyborg capacity in exchange for not being able to use any operating system at all. This can be useful in some very specific builds, but I just don't understand why you wouldn't want to use the Militech San Devistan that is completely busted. I need to make a video about this build because it's just insane. Okay, so we have new extremely powerful cyber and incredible skills. So the game should be very easy, right? Well, no. The difficulty spike in this DLC is just through the roof. Some regular enemy encounters are more difficult than level 5 police chases with max stack operatives. That is mostly due to the fact that now, you will see very often enemies with this school emoji. This is a way for the game to tell you that this enemy is scary and he will most likely kill you. But in all seriousness, these enemies are considered elite, which makes them have more health, bigger guns and thus deal bigger damage. Which most of the time makes them feel like an actual mini boss. Of course I'm playing on the very hard difficulty, and thus it makes sense that anything can kill me in 3 seconds, but that's actually good. Not only it makes the game more difficult, and as a consequence more interesting and engaging, but also these special powerful enemies have a tendency to drop skill shards that boost your skills, allowing you to get to max level faster. Another place where you can easily obtain multiple skill shards and even an entire skill point is on the main market. Here you can find two Polish men discussing something. They are in fact a reference to the founders of CDPR, Marcin Iwinski and Mikhail Kiczynski. In addition to them being a pretty nice easter egg, they can also sell you any skill shard you want although unfortunately you can only buy one of every shard type. And the last thing we'll talk about in this video are the numerous unmarked side locations you can explore to get some loot. The Phantom Liberty DLC really encourages the player to explore the new Dogtown district, as many side activities that we talked about previously are not shown on the map from the very beginning. Only once you get close to the location, it will be permanently marked on your map. But other, less interesting locations aren't marked on your map at all. For example, you can be running around Dogtown and then notice how a drone crashes into the ground and leaves a giant red cloud behind him. This isn't just a random cutscene, as you can actually go to the crash site, kill all the guards that are located there and get some legendary loot. So these are the main 
changes added in Phantom Liberty. Of course, there are many other very interesting and unique features I haven't talked about, but I plan to make a separate video on the lore and every mission of Dogtown and just talk about the Phantom Liberty DLC as a whole. So thank you everyone for watching, remember to like and subscribe, and see you in the next video.